Hey guys, I'm Nate the Intern, and welcome back to Built by Design. So today we're going to be working on basic modeling. Basic modeling is the core tool you're going to use whenever you're creating any model in Inventor. So we're going to teach you how to use things like Revolve, Extrudes, all of these complicated and tools that are in Inventor, how to, to create parts like this wheel I have. This wheel is the Andy Mark 6 inch performance wheel, and this is a part that I modeled, but you can also down, download. For these kind of models, you're gonna be able to use them on CNC machines, or even just make custom brackets that you can then have your machine shop make yourself. All right, so let's get started. All right, so we'll create a new standard part file, and I'm gonna start laying out a profile to be revolved. So this is gonna be, I'm gonna create a profile and then revolve it around an axis to create my wheel. So now I'm just gonna quickly go out and dimension this. Um, I'm gonna speed this up a little bit because you guys already know how to sketch. So this is just gonna be really quick, me sketching out this wheel. Now as you can see, I'm just using a lot of sketching tools we've used before, lines and arcs to create this profile. Um, this is a little bit difficult because, you know, as you know, there's a lot of dimensions that go into a wheel design like this, but it also this is also allowing me to make it very, very accurate and very fast. So, you know, going through here, you know, sketching, this is the, the rim of the wheel, the lip that uh, holds in the tread. I'm making sure to create all the proper dimension radiuses, come back in, you know, um, a lot of what we do in this, in modeling is just creating, you know, existing parts, but this is a part that, just as an example, is really crucial to the modeling process. We need, you know, I, correct layout sketches are what really define your model. So I'm trying to make sure that this is accurate as I go through here and do this, and as I begin to wrap it up, I am very happy with that profile sketch. I'll just go in, clean up some things, and I'll finish the sketch. All right. Now, I am going to exit out of that sketch and click Revolve. Select my axes to revolve around, and as you can see, that wheel is revolved into place. Really cool trick. I can also adjust how much of an angle I can revolve it, whether I want it you know, to be a degree number, or in this case, I'm gonna go and say full. So after a full revolve, I'm gonna click OK. I now have my part file. Looks pretty nice. You see all those nice features that are still there. All the ones I sketched in have now been revolved. And after that, I'm just going to, you know, make sure all the part looks right to me. Um, I can then go up, save that file, make sure I save it as a wheel. And this is important because I'm going to actually create multiple part files in this workflow to create a finished part. So after I've done this one, I will go up and create a new part. And again, new standard parts, always important. And now I'm going to go in and quickly lay out. This is going to be the cut that I will make. So these wheels have a lightning pattern. And so I'm just quickly laying this out again for you guys. This is, you know, again, fast forwarded, but uh, makes it easier because you don't have to waste our time. All right. So as I wrap this part up, I want to show you something though. This is a really cool sketching tool called the bridge curve. So by selecting two lines, I'm actually able to create a curve that bridges them on a tangent kind of way. And it's very, very, very nice way to make some really nicely shaped parts. Um, if you have the ability to manufacture these kind of parts, it's amazing to have some really nice CAD models that have that kind of geometry. Now again, I'm going to select the axis to road pattern this around and the default is 360 degrees and 6, which in this case actually ends up being right. Um, I could tweak this if I you know, had a different design in mind. I'll hit OK. And once that's done, I will finish the sketch and I will save this part. So after I do that, I will open up my wheel revolve 
and open up my cut sketch and I will create a plane offset from the top of that wheel. Now I could just sketch on top of this, but I want to make sure that I cut through the whole thing. I don't want to miss any parts of it. So I'll offset, make an offset plane, paste in that sketch, and then I'll select each of these profiles. But instead of an extrusion, I want to change it to a cut. Now after cutting, I'm able to go say to next, and I'm actually able to cut out that wheel. So turn the visibility of that plane off, and all of a sudden we have a, what's looking to be a very nice Animark performance wheel in really two features, which is pretty cool. So after I save that, just you know, make sure that it's clear that that's what's going on. Save that, and I'm gonna insert some sketches that are these holes. Now, I could show you how to do that, but just to save time, we're just gonna say that those popped in there. And I'm using the hole command by selecting each of these centers, I'm able to then go in, select the diameter, and I don't wanna say through all, because else it will go through the whole wheel. So I'll say to a distance, one inch is fine, it's not gonna run into anything, and I wanna make sure it's a flat head. All right, and I can go in, in this case, I can use the marking menu to select hole just by clicking the dot, click distance, click okay. Both are good workflows, just depends on your, your preference. So then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna finish all those holes. There's a little editing magic for you. And lastly, I'm gonna do these holes. These holes are a little different. These end at a termination point. They don't, and they taper at the end. So I'm just gonna, again, select the sketch, click hole. Again, look at notices where all those points are. And I'm going to say distance, one inch, make sure they're tapered, but it's not one inch. It's gonna be 0.63. All right. So now we finished our wheel, and as you can see, we've got a lot of really awesome features done, and this wheel is a very accurate model. This model is actually more accurate than the one you could download off the AndyMark website. So what I hope you can do is take these tools and now go out and create something of your own. Inventor is incredibly powerful, and anything that you can dream up, you can create. Until next time, I'm Nate the Intern. Good luck out there.